We uh, have breaking news right now, Ambassador. The New York Attorney General, Letitia James, has just announced a lawsuit against the former president, Donald Trump. Let's watch. Eric Trump. I'm serving as an officer or director in any corporation or similar, similar entity registered and or licensed in New York. To bar Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization from entering into any New York State commercial real estate acquisition or from applying for loans from any financial institution in New York for five years. To pay for the financial benefits obtained as a result of the persistent fraudulent practices at an estimated $250 million. And towards the end of my, Iraq, my remarks, I will go into the other relief that we are seeking. At the center of this, of the year long financial scheme, were the statements of financial condition that were prepared annually by and for Mr. Trump specifically from 2011 to 2021. These statements were compiled by the Trump Organization executives and were issued as a compilation report by Mr. Trump's accounting firm. The statements are explicit that the preparation was the responsibility of Mr. Trump. We're starting in 2016, the trustees of his trust, Donald Trump Jr. and Alan Weisselberg, for the sole beneficiary for the sole benefit of Mr. Donald Trump. Each statement was personally certified as accurate by Mr. Trump or by one of his trustees as part of the loan process with the intent that the information in the statement would be relied upon by banks and insurers. Mr. Trump and Mr. Weisselberg would meet to review and approve the final statement every year. Mr. Trump made known through Alan Weisselberg that he wanted his net worth reflected on the statements to increase, a desire Mr. Weisselberg and others carried out year after year in their fraudulent preparation of the statements. And when asked about these meetings under oath as part of our deposition, both men, Mr. Trump, and Mr. Weisselberg invoked their Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination, and they refused to answer. When asked under oath if he, Mr. Trump, continued to review and approve the statements after becoming President of the United States in 2017, Mr. Trump again invoked his Fifth Amendment privilege and refused to answer. Over the course of our investigation, we found that Mr. Trump, his children, the Trump Organization, created and used more than 200 false and misleading asset valuations on his statement of financial condition over that 10-year period. They issued statements that were in clear violation of general accepted principles in the general accounting principles in the United States despite representing that these statements were prepared in accordance with these principles. Some of the common tactics they used include representing that Mr. Trump had cash on hand that he did not have, ignoring critical restrictions that would significantly impact property values when setting valuations, changing the methodology used to value properties from year to year without reason or notice, and using vastly different methods to value different properties, even in the same year, and including tangible items such as brand premiums, the Trump premium, when calculating an asset's value, despite the fact that they ignored the advice of outside professionals. They also ignored the advice and, uh, and, and appraisals of outside professionals, despite claiming those individuals provided certain figures. For example, they received a series of bank ordered appraisals for the commercial property at 40 Wall Street in New York City that calculated the value of the property at $200 million as of August 2010 and $220 million as of 
November 2012. Yet, in his 2011 statement, Mr. Trump listed 40 Wall Street with a value of $524 million, which increased to $530 million over the next two years, more than twice the value calculated by the professionals. Even more egregious, the $500 million plus valuation was attributed to information from the appraiser who valued the building at just over $200 million. Another deceptive strategy they employed was to use objectively false numbers to calculate property values. Take Mr. Trump's triplex. You know, the triplex apartment in Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue? Mr. Trump represented that his apartment spanned more than 30,000 square feet, which was the basis for valuing the apartment. In reality, the apartment had an area of less than 11,000 square feet, something that Mr. Trump was well aware of. And based on that inflated square footage, the value of the apartment in 2015 and 2016 was $327 million. To this date, no apartment in New York City has ever sold for close to that amount. Tripling the size of the apartment for purposes of the valuation was intentional and deliberate fraud, not an honest mistake. Mr. Trump was intimately familiar with the layout of both the building and the apartment, having personally overseen the construction of both. Despite his sworn testimony before invoking his Fifth Amendment privilege, Mr. Weisselberg conceded that using the false square footage improperly inflated the value of the apartment almost threefold. Mr. Weisselberg admitted that this amounted to an overstatement of, give or take, $200 million. Misrepresenting the size of the apartment was only one of the many ways that Mr. Trump intentionally misvalued his asset for the purposes of increasing his net worth and inducing banks to offer more favorable terms. Mr. Trump also routinely ignored legal restrictions on development rights and marketability on properties that would significantly decrease property values. For example, let's take Trump Park Avenue in New York. This building contains both commercial and residential space. The unsold residential condo units owned by Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization represent. So the, the New York share. State Attorney General has just announced uh, a rather lengthy and detailed uh, layout of the lawsuit that she is putting against Donald Trump, former president. Some of this is really inside baseball unless it's your tax dollars in New York. And some people may even accuse it of being political because we're 48 days away from the midterm elections. And both presidents, the current and the past, um, are certainly being looked at uh, to help candidates out. So we'll see how this plays out. We're certainly going to cover it and we'll bring you highlights as they happen. But 